Hello everyone and welcome to Spirit Science 101 lesson number six. Today we are going to talk about the Bible as a teacher of universal law and I wanted to make a couple of announcements. I am seriously considering leaving YouTube. Uh, for the most part I just want to direct you guys to my blog page which is ReneeTarot.com. I'll put that in the info box and all of my future videos will be posted there in my blog. I do not like what is going on with YouTube. I do not like how all of our videos are being punished so to speak and how YouTube is still placing advertisements on our videos and getting rich off of content creators because if there were no content creators then we would not have any YouTube and in addition to that you some of you may see the very very low views on my page I know for a fact that there are other channels that I have distributed these videos to and I can track how many views I have those views are not being reflected on YouTube for that purpose I will be this will be my last video on YouTube. My other videos will be put on ReneeTarot.com for the foreseeable future. So please just go there, ReneeTarot.com, and you'll see on the right side where you can just follow me there. Thank you so much, and you'll get um, notifications. If you choose to get notifications in your email box, you'll see when I post a new video. So let's get started. Um, I wanted to talk about the Bible as a as an example of universal law. Now, when we start talking about law, we're getting into a very, very subjective topic because what is law for one is injustice for another. Everybody has their own point of view. But what I have learned is that there are certain particular circumstances that the um, the higher order has deemed as law. And it really doesn't matter whether we think it's law or not. There are examples in our lives where we might think something is okay. But when it comes to how the thing plays out in real life, we realize that based on what happened, it wasn't okay but according to the powers that be and despite what you think and despite what you feel you need to understand that this is true now the reason why i'm using the bible is not because i'm a bible thumper it's just because so many people are aware of it it's an old book and there are many books that you're going to find, and many ancient books that you're going to find bits and pieces of universal law. This particular video won't be as long as the others, so let's get started. Now, let's take, well, how do you know what, that something is universal law or not? And when I say universal law, I mean that the archetypal energies that run the universe has deemed said thing to be something that every living entity should abide by whether you wherever you are in the universe wherever planet you're on whatever star system you're in this applies to everyone okay so and, and I'll tell you about the caveats associated with it let's take give uh, and it shall be given back to you press down shaken together running over what men give into your bosom. Now, that typically is the case. There are some caveats. When you give with a free and willing heart, it's very likely that you're going to get that back. Very likely that you're not going to get it back from who you gave it to. You'll be getting it back from other sources and from other roads and methods. But you may say, okay, fine then I'm going to invite a guy into my home and take care of him and give all my children's food to him and let him be the love of my life and I'm going to be blessed. Then you turn around and you can't keep any money. Well, you're breaking other universal laws and that is why that doesn't work. For instance, as a mom and as a parent, specifically if you're a single parent, you are supposed to take care of your children. And you're not supposed to give your children what um, the things for your children to someone else to the neglect of your children. 
because child, there are universal laws over children as well. Number two, you have a grown man in your home, so this man is not taking care of you and he's not doing what's what's ordered according to the law of patriarchy and the law of and um, being a male. So he actually is not worthy of what you're giving him. So you're now you're stepping over into casting your pearls to swine. Whereas you're giving the things that you've earned to someone who does not deserve it. That's another universal law. Um, also, there's a, a law of going to vomit. You know that he's not good for you. So you have actually been given over to a mindset where you will let people abuse you and use you because you have not self-corrected. And when you don't self-correct, when you know someone is going against universal law concerning you and you don't self-correct, then that person, you'll kind of get a mind of of weirdness where you think it's okay and you won't be able to see common sense. Now, according to the Bible, there's a terminology for that called reprobate mind. And it's basically like a, a, a shroud of, of, of insanity that can come upon you when you're continually going against universal law. You will get to the point where you don't know what universal law is. You'll get really confused and you can actually lose your mind. Now, that is something that you cannot do. Now, a lot of people do not understand that there are some laws that you that one person could be subject to that another person cannot be subject to. I'm not going to call any names. I'm just going to use an, an archetypal figure. For example, let's say you are a preacher and you have gone out into the public and you have purposely publicly marketed to yourself a certain way and you have purposely um, and publicly um, stated what you think about certain things however you are doing other things in secret now typically for a normal person that doesn't matter. They can go to the person that they hurt and fix it. But when you are publicly bringing people in, you have to publicly let them know what's going on with you or you will be subject to them. So as you see certain people be are, that are being punished, they're not being punished by God. They're being punished by the energy of the people who have felt wronged. There is also a law that if a man has a woman, and, and, and these things are in the Bible, but they're not necessarily just biblical. There are things that when um, a law that says when a man has a woman and he loves the woman, he takes care of the woman and another man comes in to take the woman from him, he in some ways is justified to get rid of that man. Now, you can look at it how you want to. But if he acts in a state of um, just not thinking and not planning, it's just kind of like a, a, a manslaughter type thing, then he won't get as much time, even in our laws, as if he had premeditated that murder. Why? Because you have t stepped over into his, um, what's the word? You have stepped over into his... Um, innate territory into his 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 natural I can't think of the word right now but you stepped over into who he is as a natural man and you have violated him and there are certain responses that will take place as a result of what you have done that's why people don't need to play with other people in relationships because the universe is not going to charge them the same way they would is if they were trying to purposely um, vamp you out or target you to take something from you or hurt you. These are people who have innocently come into relationships and trusted you and thought that things were going well and they may have been going well and then at some point you got twisted and decided to hurt them. Now, what is not universal law? Well, universe, what is not universal law is like if you don't do 20 Hail Marys every day, you're going to hell. Or if you don't 
eat if you eat chicken and you're supposed to be a vegan, then you you you've done this, that, or the other. Those are not universal law things. Those are particular laws that various bodies will come up with and various organizations will come up with. However, they do fall under a universal law that if you make a vow to get up under something and you publicly state, I am going to do this and I vow to you that I will do this for such and such a time and you don't do it, then now you're up under the universal law of the vow. So it's not so much necessarily that what they told you to do was wrong. Like you're supposed to be a part of this fraternity and if you don't party every Friday night, you're wrong. That's not universal law, but you break universal law when as a friend and as a fellow human, you go to someone and make a promise and you break it. That is not a good thing. Now, there are universal laws listed all over the internet. Um, I don't know if all of them are true, um, some of them are old, they've been up for a while, but universal law basically for you is what you have found to be true. There are certain things that I have found to be true in my life with regard to the law. There's another law that has to do with, there's a lot of laws that have to do with people in power and how they treat people who are not in power. For example, um, if you are a leader of a country and you have a lot of people that you may think they're dumb, you may think they're uneducated, you may think they're poor, you may think they don't matter, but if you do not treat them right, now justice is slow in the universal law as it is in the laws of the land, but if you don't treat them right, at some point, you will reap unto yourself what you have done to them. It could be mental, spiritual, or physical. And that tells us that no matter, it could be millions of Indonesians or millions of poor Taiwanese people or millions of, you know, third world country type people, you better still treat them right. Because they also are under the universal law, which teaches us it is not about who you think is important. It's about who the law thinks is important. So we've got to line ourselves up with what the universe says will happen. Well, how do I know? How will I know what to do? Well, that's what the, that's what the purpose of study comes in. Study history. Study what happens in historical situations. Go back to the beginnings of the annals of time and read the stories and read the histories and read what happened, not just on Wikipedia, but try to get your hand on some of the, the books of the land. That's why it's so good for you people who are scholars to learn more than one language because if you know more than one language and you come in, or either take a Latin class and you begin to understand the root words, it will make it so much easier for you to interpret other texts so that you can read ver from various countries because some of the things that you will get from the first world countries are highly, highly tainted and highly, highly um, corroborated um, to, to confuse you or to provide false doctrine. There, ha there was a book that I was reading recently where I've started to try to build my, my library because I really don't think that we should, well, I don't think we should really worry about should we have an e an ebook versus a hardback book because the the governments are preserving certain books in hardback form for the next generations to dig up. So you don't necessarily have to do that. But I just happen to like hardback books. I mean, I think libraries are the coolest things in the universe, <laughs> or one of the coolest things. So I buy hardback books, and I was reading somebody's interpretation. And when a word, they put in a word and all these warning bells just, just kind of like flew up in my head. Like this is not the right interpretation. They stuck this in to twist the minds of the people. You guys, if you are people who are either interpreting these ancient books or are you are actually um, 
providing the funds for the interpretation. You are the government officials of culture and humanity that are over these projects, digging up the books, interpreting the books. Please do not misinterpret the books to serve a certain race of people or a certain group of people. We will know. We hear more than just human voices. Please don't do that. Everybody will know because it is the universal law is not something that you can hide. You think you can hide it, but you can't. So read history. Go back into the historical annals of how various groups came to be, how they came into power, how they fell out of power. What did the leader do? What did they not do? What did the people do? What did the hero do? What did they not do? What did the spirit do? What did, did it not do? Understand various cultures, understand different norms in various cultures. And then as you put it all together, and it will take some time. As you put it all together, you will begin to understand universal law. Also, listening to that quiet voice, specific, specifically late at night or in the wee hours of the morning, the in dreams that tell you and correct you when you're doing something that you think nobody saw. All right, guys. Again, one more time. I am going to take my videos to ReneeTarot.com, R E N E E. T-A-R-O-T dot com. I will no longer be putting videos up on YouTube. Um, there will be some vids that I may put up on Facebook. Not too many. I'm um, under Renee Taro on Facebook as well. And you'll, I'll leave this channel up on YouTube, but I'm pretty much kind of done with putting my own stuff up on there. I think that they're trying to hoard too much money and that's against the universal law. Okay. All right, you guys take care. Have a great one. Bye-bye.